All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, we are gonna be direct planting some fig cuttings into the ground. And what is a direct planting? We are just basically going to take some fig cuttings here and we're just going to stick them in the ground. And uh, they're gonna have a pretty good success rate rooting this way. This is a practice that we do in the spring uh, that I've done for a number of years now. I've done it now, this will be my at least my third year doing this. Um, figs root very easily, right? And a lot of us like to complicate things. We do it indoors, set up closets like I have. I've had great success that way, um, so I can't knock the method, but realistically, if I could get all of my cuttings through the winter time and just stick them in the ground, um, I probably would. It's, it's really uh, a very easy process. There's a lot less care this way. I don't have to be feeding them. I don't have to be babying them. Because it is the spring, they're going to be acclimated well. These are ideal or the beginning of ideal rooting environments. So what's gonna happen now that it's kinda, actually today's gonna be about 70, but because the root temperatures here are somewhere around 50 degrees, we're gonna begin that callusing process. That's really all that's gonna happen. Uh, because the bottom here, you already have some callusing, but what I'm gonna do is when I prepare these cuttings, I'm gonna do a little bit of a score on the bottom. This cutting doesn't actually look all that great, believe it or not. Um, just because you can tell underneath the cambium. This one looks a lot better. And what I could do is make you know, new cuts on the bottom as well. Um, that's not too necessary. I think uh, if you just make the score down the bottom, what that's gonna do is allow this to callus, as I mentioned, with the cooler soil temperatures. And then once things warm up a bit, um, these will start putting out roots and they'll start to put out leaves. And I'd say probably around May, sometime in May. Right now we're in, we're in early April, I think it's April 8th. Uh, these will actually do their thing and uh, start leafing out in May. And then by the end of the season, if I'm lucky and this is enough energy in it, um, everything goes well and this thing gets off to the right start, I'll have a pretty good sized tree by the end of the season. So some keys though is that the bigger the cutting you have, the more energy, the bigger your tree is going to be at the end of the season. If I were to, um, as an example, cut back one of my trees on the patio here, um, and I were to take a branch that was, let's say, uh, two to three feet long, um, probably off of some two-year-old growth instead of the one-year-old growth, I would have a much bigger tree in a much shorter time. Um, it's just that it's, it takes a bit longer to root, and that's not normally what we go for in an indoor environment, but an outdoor environment, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, so what we're gonna do, we just prepared this. We're also gonna throw on some parafilm. This is so, so important. I can't believe people are actually rooting cuttings without this stuff. It doesn't make any sense, uh, particularly the figs. It's just, uh, if you have dry, a dry environment, even outside, if you have a dry environment outside, uh, these cuttings will dry up. And this is really gonna help prevent that desiccation. It's, you know, think of this as like a graft. We wanna protect that graft union from desiccating. Um, so a few words on the, the bed prep here. Sorry, this is taking me a bit here. Keep breaking the parafilm. But I guess a real quick point is that we wanna stretch and twist, stretch and twist. You don't want to just wrap this around and not stretch it. You have to stretch the parafilm to get good adhesion to the cutting. Go all the way around. I like to do everything that's going to be above above the soil is going to have is going to be wrapped with the parafilm. Even just a little bit below the soil, whatever's going to be just below the soil, I'll also wrap with parafilm. So I got my area here selected. You know, get yourself some decent site selection here. And what I want to do is just loosen the soil up a bit. This is real heavy clay. I've been probably stepping on this a bit. I just want to loosen this up. Um, it just actually just rained here a little bit, so this is a bit wet. Um, and that's all I'm going to do is just loosen this up. And this is a good practice, I think, 
because ideally you don't want too much, you don't want a too heavy soil. You want a lot of air getting access to these roots of these cuttings. We don't want these to rot. Um, I have found through whatever reason, I don't know why exactly, but my clay here, as heavy as it is, I really don't have any rot. Very few of these cuttings ever rot, and I don't know why. I guess because maybe the bioactivity in the, in the clay here isn't really all that high. Um, I don't know, but there's really not a whole lot of rotting or decaying that happens in this clay. So I really just, I'm gonna just stick this in the loose soil here. And uh, there's actually a rock down here. Just gonna get that rock out, cover this back up. I have a walnut there. Don't ask me where the walnut came from. These squirrels do whatever they wanna do. And then we're just gonna stick this in. It's still not going in as deep as I want. There must be something down in here. No, it doesn't look like it. Interesting, all right, let's try it again. And then that's it. We're just gonna stick that in there, cover this up with some soil. We don't wanna pack this down. We're just gonna cover it a bit. Um, it, I don't know what it is, but the clay just provides the perfect rooting environment. It has the right humidity. They don't rot. Um, yeah, it's just such a more simple process. Again, that's all I have to do. Um, I'm gonna do this for the rest of the cuttings. The same thing with this. We already scored the bottom here. I may even consider with this cutting, cutting this back a bit, getting my pruning shears and cutting that back. But they all go in like this and uh, we have a pretty good success rate th this way. I would suggest that if you guys are, um, if you're not really convinced just yet, go to our other videos. We have videos on the old Italian man way of propagating fig cuttings. Those are the videos that we have done in the past showing you guys this process that we just did and also the results. Um, so go back and watch it if you're not convinced. There's cuttings literally right there that we rooted last fall. All of them took, I, cut, I took out about half of them and now there's three of them here. And depending on how well they do, I'm gonna probably select one and rip out the others. You know, this is gonna be in here as well with its friend, with its partner. Whichever one does the best, I'll probably keep it and dig up the other one. You could space them out a bit so it's easier to dig them up be careful when you're digging them up. Um, you can really easily break roots. So, uh, oh, one other thing is that we wanna bury a lot of these nodes. Um, now, the deeper we go, the cooler the soil is um, until you get to a point, obviously, but what we really are going to try to achieve is bury a decent amount of these nodes. I'd probably say about a foot of nodes if you could or as many nodes as you can. In this particular situation, I have two nodes sticking above the soil, three nodes below the soil. So I'm trying to have as many below as I can, but also you wanna have some above. So find that right balance. If you have a foot long cutting, bury 90% of the nodes, but keep 10% of the nodes above the, the, uh, the ground. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, check us out on Fig Boss. Facebook and Instagram. We'll see everybody soon. We'll update you guys this year again on the results that we have in the fall. Okay guys, take care.